May I request everyone to please remain standing for the national anthem. Janaganamana Adhinayaka Jayahe Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Punjab Sindhu Gujarat Maratha Dravida Puttala Vanda Hindya Himachala Yamuna Ganda Puchala Jaladhita Randa Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Ashisha Mange Gahe Tava Jaya Gaga Jana Gana Mangala Dayaka Jaya He Bharata Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Welcome once again to the Honorable Vice President of India and the Second Lady, Dr. Sudesh Tankar. And now I would like to call upon the President of PhD CCI to kindly felicitate the Honorable Vice President of India. Thank you. And I would also like to request the senior vice president, Saket Dalmiaji, to felicitate the second lady of India, Dr. Sudesh Dhankar. Thank you very much. Kindly take your seats. And now I would like to request Sri Sanjeev Agrawal, the Vice President, PhD Chamber, for the introduction of the Honorable Vice President of India. Respected Shri Jagdeep Dhankarji, Honorable Vice President of India, Dr. Sudesh Dhankar, Second Lady of India, Sri Pradeep Mantali, President, PhD Chamber, Sri Saket Dalmia, Senior Vice President, PhD CCI, Mr. Sanjay Agarwal, immediate former President, Excellencies, former Presidents and Managing Committee members of PhD CCI, Captains of Industry, friends from the media. A very good morning to all. It is my pleasure to introduce Shri Jagdeep Dhankar, Honorable Vice President of India, whom I have the honor of knowing personally. And he is one of the most remarkable and humble person I have ever met as the chief guest of the 117th annual session of PhD Chambers of Commerce. <clears throat> Shri Jagdeep Dhankarji is an Indian politician and lawyer who is serving as the 14th and current Vice President of India since 11th August 2022. Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji describes Sri Dankar ji as Kisan Putra. He was born on 18th May 18, 1951 to Sri Gokul Chand and Sri Mati Kesri Devi in Kithana village. Grown up in a family of farmers, he has been trained with the value of always staying connected with his roots. He has brought up seeing the simplicity and hard work of people in his village till his primary education. It was these values that he had drawn from his surroundings that motivated him to walk six kilometers from his village to attend his school. Later, he moved to Chittorgarh for his further education at Senek School. For his college education, 
Shri Dhankar ji joined Maharaja's College, Jaipur, and graduated in BSc Honours, Physics. After that, he persuaded a degree of law from the University of Rajasthan. Shri Jagdeep Dhankar ji began his professional career as a lawyer. And despite being a first generation professional, he rose to be among the top legal experts in the country in 1990. He was also designated as senior advocate by the High Court of Jurisdiction for Rajasthan. Ever since, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar has been practicing primarily in the Supreme Court and his focus of litigation have been in the field of steel, coal, mining, and international commercial arbitration, amongst others. He has appeared in various courts in the country and was the most experienced designated senior advocate of the state until he assumed the office of the governor of West Bengal on 30th July, 2019. During his legal career, Sri Dhankar was youngest president to be elected as a president of Rajasthan High Court Bar Association. A year later, he also became a member of the Rajasthan Bar Council in 1988. Sri Jagdeep Dhankar was elected to the Parliament of India in 1989 from Junjunu Parliamentary Constituency. Subsequently, he also served as a Minister for State for Parliamentary Affairs in 1990. In 1993, he was elected to the Rajasthan Assembly from the Kishangarh constituency in Ajmer district. As a legislator, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar served as a member of important committees in the Lok Sabha and Rajasthan Legislative Assembly. As Union Minister, he was also a member of a delegation as the deputy leader of a parliamentary group to the European Parliament. An avid reader, Sri Dhankar is a sports enthusiast too, and he has been in the president of the Rajasthan Olympic Association and Rajasthan Tennis Association. Listening to music and traveling are his other hobbies. He has traveled extensively to many countries, including the US, Canada, UK, Italy, Switzerland, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, China, Hong Kong, Singapore, etc. Sri Dhankar is married to Dr. Sudesh Dhankar, a postgraduate in economics from Banasthali Vidya Peet a prestigious university in rural Nawaians in the year 1979. Respected sir, on behalf of the PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I welcome you to our 117th Alvin General Session. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you so much for that uh, introduction. Now, may I request upon uh, the president of PhDCCI, Pradeep Multani ji, for his welcome address. Oops, up from this side. A very good morning to everyone. On behalf of PhD Chamber and my own, it gives us great pleasure to welcome you all to the 117th PhDCCI annual session. India at 75, celebrating India's pursuit for self-reliance. We are extremely thankful to all the distinguished guests and members who have been kind enough to spare the valuable time to be here with us today. We are privileged to have with us Shri Jagdeep Dhankarji, Honorable Vice President of India, and Dr. Sudesh Dhankarji, the Second Lady of India. PhD CCI would like to take this opportunity to appreciate and congratulate the Honorable Vice President for his exemplary work and achievements in his professional and personal years of life. Respected Vice President, sir, it is inspiring for all to learn of your illustrious public life, demonstrating astute administrative skills, brilliant intellect, and ethical responsibilities. So you are a great visionary and a thought leader, and we highly appreciate your dedication and commitment towards growth and development of our country. At this juncture, sir, with your due permission, let me introduce PhD CCI for the benefit of those who are attending the annual session for the first time. PhD CCI has been working as a catalyst for the promotion of Indian industry, trade, and entrepreneurship for the past 117 years. It is a forward-looking, proactive, and dynamic pan-India apex organization. As a partner in progress with industry and government, PhD CCI works at the grassroots level with strong national and international linkages for propelling progress, harmony, and integrated development of the Indian economy. 
PHDCCI, acting as the voice of industry and trade, reaching out to more than 150,000 large, medium, and small industries, has forged ahead leveraging its legacy with the industry knowledge across multiple sectors to take the Indian economy to the next level. At the global level, we have been working with the embassies and high commissions in India and overseas to bring in the international best practices and business opportunities. With India in its 76th year of independence and celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, India is at a point which gives industry and especially our youth an opportunity to contribute to making an affluent India when it turns 100 in 2047 and stands as a leading nation globally on the strength of our economic performance and vibrant democracy. India today stands as a shining example of growth and stability amid the global crisis. With a GDP of USD 3.3 trillion, the country has achieved the distinction of becoming the fifth largest economy in the world behind the US, China, Japan, and Germany due to its rapidly expanding economy and is poised to become one of the three largest economies by the end of this decade. I compliment the able leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji, under whom significant steps have been taken in the last two years to implement the big picture of an Atam Nirbha Bharat, self-reliant India. We are fortunate that being an aspirational society, a high quality skilled workforce is being developed, which will play a huge role in realizing India's dreams to build a developed nation in the Amrit Kal over the next 25 years. India has several advantages such as demography, economy, governance, technology, all the key in ingredients to make India globally strong. A series of systematic reforms taken by the government and the RBI in the last few years to improve the ease of doing business has paid rich dividend. Our economy is showing strong resilience to the global geopolitical shocks and we recorded an inspiring GDP growth rate of 8.7% for the financial year 21-22. Today, India is demonstrating significant improvement in ease of doing business and its attractiveness for foreign investment. The present geopolitical landscape has become a catalyst for foreign in investors to set up businesses in India as the case for investment diversification across multiple geographies, which offers stability, has become stronger. The MSME sector has emerged as a highly vibrant and dynamic sector of Indian economy by, contrib by contributing significantly in GDP, exports, employment, and leading to inclusive industrial development in the country. To catalyze the growth of this sector, there is a need to ensure hassle-free credit availability to MSMEs, along with enhancing its value chains, thus making them more structurally competent to add to their efficiency, share in manufacturing sector, employment generation, and the country's overall export growth momentum. While working for inclusive economic growth, we must think about sustainability. Energy sector is evolving rapidly with technological innovations and collaboration. India with its missions like National Hydrogen Mission and National Renewable Energy Policy is putting in efforts to co compete with the world and maximize utilization of green energy which will help the nation in obliging to its climate goals, sustainable development. I'm pleased to share that the chamber has been working at policy and grassroots level for reassuring India's leadership role in meeting the sustainable development goals. And on the climate action front, we organized an international climate summit to mitigate the climate change risk globally and thus placing India as the leading global player on the climate action front. Going ahead, the next 25 years of Amrit Kal would provide great opportunities to build a new India. New India where the economy will attain its potential growth rate of double digits, becoming the third largest economy in the world ecosystem. The manufacturing sector will be globally competitive. The agriculture sector will be sufficient not only to serve the domestic population, but also will significantly visible in the global agri and food exports. Millions of jobs will be created for the growing young population and many fold increase in the income level of the people, simplified and rationalized taxation system and ease on doing business at the highest level. New India with housing for all, education for all, easy access to medical and health facilities and strengthened women empowerment and safety. 
the new india will have numerous success stories to tell demonstrate and sell to the world we are really proud that india will lead the league of leading nations by its upcoming g20 presidency in december 2022 its voice and leadership will reverberate globally as it will center around the themes of the world as one family and the need for sustainable growth further potential market opportunities have opened up due to the recent trade agreements with the uae and australia and the proposal to establish a trade and technology council with eu india is also negotiating trade deals with developed nations such as the uk canada and the european union india and bangladesh also plan to negotiate on a bilateral comprehensive economic partnership agreement with these words we welcome you all to today's session once again and look forward to meaningful interactions to support the economic environment of the country in order that india becomes a world leader in the next 25 years once again we welcome honorable vice president of india and second lady and with a request to enlighten us with his inspiring vision and perspective so may we have a big round of applause for the honorable vice president <laughs> Thank you, Jai Hind, and God bless us all. Thank you so much, Mr. Pradeep Multani ji, and we are immensely privileged and honoured to have the esteemed presence of our chief guest of inaugural session India at seventy-five, celebrating pursuit for self-reliance, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar, Honourable Vice President of India. we look forward to your guiding words sir that shall further strengthen our resolve for working collectively for atmanirbhar bharat shri dr jagdeep dhankar ji i request you to address the gathering thank you very good morning to all of you in my left leg at the toe i was having some pain in the morning when i entered this hall the pain was gone it was soothing the moral of the story is categorical be more in connect with the industry giants with leaders of business and that will be in national interest i look forward to great greater connectivity sri pradeep multani ji president ph pcci sri sake dalmia ji senior vice president ph dci sri sanjeev agarwal ji vice president sri sanjeev agarwal ji immediate former president distinguished audience i have number of friends here to name them i will end up making a mistake i can assure you for me it is absolute privilege gives me immense satisfaction that i am associated with the leaders of industry on the occasion of 117th annual session of this chamber that is in its second century when i came here introduction was given introductions often are very embarrassing and they can be questioned also but undoubtedly there has to be a caveat when your spouse is on your right side if we go into our historical perspective our chambers of business and industry have played a key role in our economic upliftment and also in freedom movement i take this opportunity to urge leading national chambers to pool their talent in a think tank platform so that there is consensual stance on issues that call for addressable 
by the government and other agencies. If chambers come together, act in tandem and togetherness on such issues, this will be a great guidance also to the government and other agencies. This synergic relationship between industry chambers and government will benefit the society enormously and pave our way to further growth on incremental trajectory. attention by leaders of the industry and business. In this scenario, there could not have been a more apt team than India at 75, celebrating India's pursuit of self-reliance. It is of contemporaneous relevance and appropriate for a national chamber in its second century. Certainly, the discussions, deliberations, and sideline interactions amongst business leaders are bound to be useful. I hope this will fructify more significantly in this session. Art Nirbhar Bharat, we talk about it, but we, if you look back, it is reflection of Savdesi moment a century ago during our freedom struggle. India's pursuit for Self-reliance is different than other countries, very different. We believe in the world being a village, we are not self-centered. We believe in world inclusivity. And medical supplies to talk of recent events to more than 100 countries during COVID minutes is just one such glorious, glaring example. There are many. Industry has always been a key part of India's growth story. And this has happened in spite of hiccups, in spite of problems, the creators of wealth, creators of employment, those engaging in innovation, taking all risks for national benefit, surely need an ecosystem that is at least not in obstruction mode. I congratulate the industry for shaping India, what it is today and what it will be in decades to come. Things have taken shape for the better on account of series of affirmative and well, well thought out government policies. We have seen a spectacular gr growth in recent times all because affirmative steps that had not been taken for a long time, they were taken with courage, conviction, and in national interest. Economists have indicated, and firmly based on statistics, that Bharat, the world's fastest growing large economy, as was indicated by the Honorable President, the fifth largest and honor we got only a few weeks ago. We are poised to be the third towards end of the decade. This could not have happened. Certainly it could not have happened unless we pay tribute, recognize the role of industry, our hard-working farmers, Sramjeevi workers, artisans, and innovative scientists. This epochal transformation has impacted lives of millions at all levels, be it rural India or urban India. The economic reform basket and series of out-of-box steps 
taken by the government have transformed our business ecosystem for the better and this has resulted in inclusive growth growth by itself does not carry much meaning to societal development unless it is inclusive that inclusive growth we have witnessed in recent times be it inclusion of people in the banking system be it making available a platform to those who have talent but no money and the impact is being felt all over for the first time the country came to have and something that was needed long back a skill development ministry and that is in tune with the time and the demand of the situation i would make an appeal to the industry because industry alone can catalyze the wholesome development and that is optimal utilization of human resource especially from younger demographics we must create an environment ecosystem where every talented person is in a position to fully exploit his or her talent underutilized utilization of talent underemployment i would say and use a very strong word are curse to development we have to be antidotal to such kind of situations and that can be done only primarily principally by the people who are in this hall need for systemic utilization of resources both human and natural can never be over emphasized if we look at our constitutional scheme of things if we go to directive principles of state policy we will find equitable distribution of wealth and natural resources the easiest way the surest way to bring about this big change is to make opportunities available for people to exploit their talent to their fullest advantage what we have seen recently that several affirmative steps have been taken and they make us very proud like the startup ecosystem our country has a rich pool of over 75000 startups i recall the days when as a young lawyer at the threshold of my career i had to walk into a banker's office to get a loan of 6000 rupees i got it and that changed my profile as a lawyer i recall the days when as a student traveling 6 kilometers from my village to another village for class 6 study got a scholarship full scholarship and i could get quality education that is the primary focus the country is having and this accounts for 75000 startups 100 unicorns and is valued more than us 1 billion now indian industrial map is dotted by these start startups and they are turning out to be game changers no one knows better than the leaders of the industry that even their younger generation is thinking out of the box they are getting away from the mainstream of their normal trade and business and to the surprise of the senior generation they are meeting with success unheard of or imagined by the senior generation we can take legitimate pride that in the first 6 months of the current financial year 2 crore small enterprises have been sanctioned rupees 1.4 lakh crores mudra loans and the one is speaking to you is grateful to the banker for giving 6000 rupees look at the big change 
we are witnessing at the moment this culture is taking roots in the hinterland also and our msme sector is doing a fine job the gandhian ideal with the world has recognized with great deference is being reflected in the mantra for new india this mantra is shaping our country in all elements including business and industry sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas sabka prayas and this is not limited to government many of the countries you know more than i do the growth engine is propelled by the industry and business they shape the destiny of the country and they act geometrically if the government is in supportive mode they have been known to be doing things in spite of governmental support but if support is there it is geometric and that is happening in the present system gratifying to note that sabka priyas has got on one platform to serve the nation at large giving back to the society our ancient tradition has now found a statutory space also and that is csr i am sure everyone present here will act in a manner so that rational utilization of csr to serve societal cause by big projects is undertaken i have no doubt industry is quite capable of it during the pandemic the concept of trusteeship which gandhi ji visualized and practiced was followed by indian industry there was not a single instance where indian industry or business thought of making profit during this difficult time and this is a great tribute to our commitment to our civilizational ethos for next 25 years as indicated by the honorable president we have to work in a manner so that the samrat kal rectifies into our vision of india in 2047 i can only share with you and you know it more than i do what happened till now is remarkable glorious unthinkable but what will happen every year now onwards will make us realize we are on way to attaining our age old status of being leaders in every walk of life at a global benchmark i will avail this opportunity and of course with a caveat it will be taken in positive manner this i am doing with a heavy heart i have been pained by it for a very very long time bharat is on the rise there is global recognition about it. no one knows it better than leaders of the business and industry when you walk out of this country step out of this country go to another country you know the respect for india has grown up respect for indians has gone up indian passport carries a different kind of respect and credibility we are a nation no longer bound by what others say recent observations by senior functionaries of the government leave no manner of doubt that india stands alone when it comes to ethics to serve its purpose and to secure world peace <laughs> this situation was never witnessed ever before since 1947 the world is feeling the impact of it and in a positive sense india stands for peace and global growth our age old concept world is a village we do it but amongst this we have a situation some of us very few number very few are allergic 
to sharing this astounding success of Bharat. And the problem lies, they keep on looking at holes, even with industry, business, governance. They never think of appreciating, enjoying that Bharat is on the rise as never before. I find it absolutely irrational and difficult to figure out. Or chestnut manner, these people are belittling our mind-blowing accomplishments. Accomplishments of industry, our farm sector, our workers, our youth. Why are they doing it? And added to this, is another problem. They get media space in high decibel. They cover a huge space. Their touch with the ground reality is not there. They are in complete disconnect with the sentiment and ground reality of the nation. An answer to them has to emanate from those who are firmly creators of this ecosystem, the leaders of industry and business. You have played a major role in making us what India is today. If your efforts are so belittled, are not recognized, and by people who have no connect either with the growth story or ground reality, who has to rebuff them? Who has to challenge them? Who has to antidote them? I have no doubt. The people here have to take initiative. And I'm quite sure media will think within. It's a fourth pillar of democracy. In current times, it's very important. And all of you present here individually and collectively are well in a position to show these people their place. Look at your hard work, the great ecosystem you have created. If Bharat has fed 80 crore people during the pandem pandemic and continues to do so, it could not have been without efforts of the farmer, Sramjeevi worker, and business and leaders. You maintain the chain intact under most difficult circumstances. How can we count in someone belittling it? COVID was a menace to humanity. It was non-discriminatory challenge. India is 1.3 billion people vaccinating 1.3 billion people twice. The very thought of it will make us shiver. This has been accomplished. Reflect back who created the hurdles, who created an environment of no confidence, who created that this will not fructify into positive action. Those people have to be held accountable and there can be no greater accountability than societal accountability. There can be no greater accountability than accountability by one's own peers. I would be best judged by my peers in the legal profession. I therefore appeal to you. We have to step out slightly outside our business commitments. We have to believe and enjoy and relish the unprecedented and paralleled growth story of this country that is known as Bharat. And it is a matter of time when all of us will share it that we are a world leader. We have been world leader earlier and we have enough to give to the world. Never in the history you will come across a country that has never nurtured the idea even remotely of expansion. The most recent 
observation of the Indian Prime Minister globally appreciated. War is no solution to any problem. This voice is on account of the strength given by one three billion people. I am sure everyone present here will take note of it and deal with this malaise which is floating and disturbing our growth story unnecessarily and with an agenda that certainly cannot be put in the category of in the interest of the nation or our nationalism. Once again, I'm grateful for affording me this great opportunity. And I would conclude only by saying that the thought I'm living, that if chambers of commerce and business come on a single platform, our think tank of their own collectively, there is consensual approach. They identify issues to be addressed by the government. You will find in me your foot soldier. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Honorable Vice President of India for those words of wisdom. You rightly pointed out how the key to our success and our journey for self-reliance is or lies in the equitable distribution of wealth and natural resources. You clearly pointed out how we all are responsible for giving back to the society and you emphasized the, the role of CSR. And of course, you rightly pointed out that the respect for India has gone up worldwide. India's growth story has been commendable and it has been recognized all over. Thank you so much for those words of wisdom. And now I would like to uh, call upon Sri Sake Dalmia, Senior Vice President, PhD CCI, for his vote of thanks. Uh, excuse me, sir, can I please request you to use this podium on the left side? Thank you so much. A uh, good, uh, very good morning to everybody. Shri Jagdeep Dhankarji, Honorable Vice President of India, Dr. Sudesh Dhankarji, Second Lady of India, Shri Pradeep Multani Ji, our dear President, Shri Sanjeev Agarwal Ji, our dear Vice President, RSG, Shri Saurabh Sa Sanyal Ji, our dear former Presidents, members of the Management Committee, Your Excellencies, our dear anchor Nagma ji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and friends from media. Thank you so much for coming here today. I would like to first convey my deep regards and hearty thanks to Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji, our Honorable Vice President of India, and Dr. Sudesh Dhankarji, Second Lady of India, for sparing their invaluable time for their busy schedule for gracing the occasion and addressing the members of the PhD chamber and industry. Sir, they say education sets us free. In spite of being so highly qualified and having such a tough journey ahead in such a young age in your life, sir, we thank you and salute you to choose to dedicate your life to help India. Sir, when I went to meet you, to invite you for today's session, Mujhe aisa laga ki main apne pitaji se milne aaya hu. I felt like I have come to meet my father. Aapka jo pyar tha, your warmth, your affection. And I felt as if you were reaching out to me to ask me 
what you can do for me. Sir, at that time, I did not realize this emotion, this deep emotion and this sense arises in you for the, because of your love for your country. <laughs> Sir, you reminded us that industry played a very important part in India for the freedom movement. And thank you for reminding us again that the journey ahead for India to be truly free by every citizen having a right to education, health, and a basic quality of life is again back to the industry to make a clarion call to reach out. And in this journey, sir, I would like to remind the audience here that at the PhD Chamber of Commerce, we are 1,50,000 companies strong, primarily focusing on small, medium, micro industries. And we love your suggestion of working collectively with other chambers of commerce. And we will try to do our best so that we come with a collective force to seek your guidance and help to change India into stronger, better, and probably the most vibrant economy of the world. Thank you once more, sir, for sp sparing your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now may I request everyone present on stage to kindly gather for a group photograph. The national. Yeah. Before, before we leave the stage, may I request everyone to kindly rise once again for the national anthem. <laughs> Jai 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 Jai